hello, hello, hello. So, nobody seems to be talking about it. So I'm going to talk about it because, uh, yeah, for some reason, none of the big reviewers anyway. I'm talking like uh, Jeremy Johns and Beyond the Trailer, because those are the two that I sort of keep up to date with. They've not really mentioned The Punisher. Um, and this is a binge-worthy show that should, you know, be seen in a day. Uh, and I'm shocked. that I, Just in general, I haven't really seen, like, apart from sort of company channels like IGN and Machinima and stuff like that, I've not seen, and like, you know, the geeky ones, I'm not going to name any, because I don't remember, um, but I've not really seen anybody review The Punisher Season 1. Now, this is very improvised, I've, I haven't got a list, I haven't got any sort of preparation, it's just, you know, boom, let's talk about it. So, Punisher Season 1 is amazing, let me just put it that way. Now, you need to be warned, rated R, it is uh, very violent, quite a bit of swearing, uh, and very violent, again. Lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of violence, because it's the Punisher, which is brilliant. Let's talk John Burnfall. John Burnfall is the Punisher. Um, I think no matter what, he will always put 100% into being this character, and I'm happy about it, because it suits him really, really, really well. Um, and I'd only really seen him in stuff like The Walking Dead and stuff beforehand, and obviously like Daredevil Season 2 is the Punisher. Um, but after seeing him in this, it's, well, you know, he's been in, like, um, was he in The Wolf of Wall Street? I'm going to assume he was. And I'm sure he's in something else. I think he's in, like, Baby Driver. But, like, this has really cemented him, in my opinion, as, like, a big actor of our era. Which, you know, you say, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, and all, like, you know, all those big names. But you have sort of underrated actors that are also big if that makes any sense at all, uh, which is John Burnfall. I'm going off on a tangent here where I just rant about John Burnfall not being popular enough. Um, it's a shame that Punisher isn't going to be canon to the MCU because I think that this uh, John Burnfall Punisher would work brilliantly with the innocence of Spider-Man. Um, I would love to see that, but we're probably not going to get it. Um, but anywho... Yes, John Burnfall completely nails the character. He seems 100% committed to it. He seems to love the role, which is even better. It's brilliant when somebody loves a role and they're good at it. <coughs> ben Affleck, you know, stay at being Batman, please. Um, but, you know, there, there are a few things in the season that weren't amazing, but they're really, really small things. Like, some of the supporting characters weren't great. Um, the main villain is Jigsaw, or at least the co-villain, I guess. Like, the other villain is my only downside that I can really think of. I don't. I think he's called, like, Mr. Orange or something. It's a terrible name, uh, and he doesn't really do anything. He has, like, one torture scene, which is pretty good, and then the way that he gets taken out is pretty bloody violent. Um, I'm going to try and avoid spoilers. Saying that Jigsaw is the villain isn't a spoiler because it got leaked before the show even came out. Um, but yeah, the way that they do Jigsaw is fantastic. My favourite part of the series. Um, some of the supporting characters were okay. Karen was in it, which was nice. Uh, sort of linking it back to Daredevil and all the other Marvel shows, making sure that you know you remember that there is a Netflix Marvel universe. Um... You know, she was pretty good in it as sort of like a semi-love interest. Um, her episode in the hotel was probably my favourite episode out of the whole season. Maybe. Barring like... No, in fact, no, I think it was. <laughs> I was going to say maybe one of the later on ones, but no, I think it, I think it might have been my favourite episode of the season, the hotel one. Um, but yeah, the, the character who plays, is it uh, Billy Russo? He, the actor who plays him is brilliant. He played Prince Caspian in Narnia, which is a step up, my God. Um, but he's fantastic. Uh, whoever plays Madani is pretty good. Like, for the first half of the season, she was a bit meh. Like, I don't know. I guess you weren't really meant to like her, which worked because I couldn't stand her. And then sort of halfway through, you sort of seen her, like, start to understand the Punisher a little bit more. Um, and by the end, she was pretty damn good. She was a pretty cool, pretty cool cat. Um, 
we had Micro, who looks suspiciously like Kenny Omega, uh, which I've pointed out to Aiden. Um, we won't, we won't, we won't uh, talk about Micro and Kenny Omega's likeness too much. But yeah, it is really, really weird. His whole like storyline at the beginning of the season, I thought was fantastic. I loved it so much. Um, I really like Micro as a character, but I'm not sure where they can go with him now that he's back with his... Oh, that's spoilers. <laughs> All right, that's going to be spoilers. God, I'll have to put a warning in the title. Oh, if you're watching a review, surely you've seen it by now. It's been almost a week, it's fine. Um, but yeah, he like I don't really know what they're going to do with him now that he's back with his family by the end of the season. It seems like Punisher's going to cut ties with him, but I'm sure he'll be back. My shoulder just cracked. Um, but yeah, his whole family, I thought they were pretty good actors as well. I thought what they did was cool. The storyline with those, pretty damn good. Um, I can't think of any other downsides other than that Mr. Orange villain. He was just a bit naff. And you, you didn't really get too much of his background or anything. I thought all the military stuff was really, really cool. Um, I don't know. There's something about the show that just kept me intrigued. And I don't know if it was the character or the story like I don't, I don't think it was the story because the story was one of the weakest things. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad point, but it wasn't one of the best points. I do think the story was a little bit naff, um, but there was something about it. I don't know if it was like after, like there's this, there's this scene right. There's this scene in the first episode right at the very end where Hell Broke Loose kicks in, and Punisher goes mental on like three guys during a construction fight and I think it like a construction fight a construction yard construction area and I think that was what made me think because I'd watched that watched the second episode and then gone off to watch Justice League so I think like if I hadn't gone to watch Justice League I would have carried on so like but I think the the thing that kept me going was after that amazing fight scene I was kind of like oh Show me more. <laughs> Show me more, John. Show me more. And you get more. And I think that's what I like about it. There is like a dip in, um, I guess, adrenaline in the show, if that makes sense. Like there's a, a dip in energy, like around sort of episode three slash four-ish, I suppose, that seems to be turning people away from it. Uh, keep going, because it gets better, trust me. Um, for people who are going to say, oh, it's needlessly uh, gory, it doesn't need to be this violent and stuff. Yes, it does. It's trying to be accurate to the comic books. Don't try to change it. If they change it, people are just going to complain even more. And we get into like a bloody DCEU situation. Oh, you're not canon and uh, you're not valuing the comics and all that sort of stuff. We get into like a Gotham situation where people aren't happy. So the violence is very much needed. It's very, very good, and it's very well done. The budget for the show, I feel like you can kind of see the budget um, sort of very early on. You can see that they're trying to sort of keep it to just um, a, f a few a few, a few, few locations, um, especially when they spend a lot of time in Micro's hideout, but I don't think it damages the show at all. Um, I think all of the time that they spend in Micro's hideout is really, really good. It reminds me of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hideout from uh, the second film, the, like, Batch of Ooze film, whatever it's called. But, yeah, that's what that reminds me of, like, their, their subway hideout. Um, the, there was, uh, I was going to say there wasn't a lot shown in the trailers. Like, there was one scene in the trailers which we were all kind of like, hmm... Is that going to be the big fight scene and then the rest are going to be a bit naff? And it kind of is the big fight scene. Right at the very end of the season where he just mauls like 50 people. But the thing is, it doesn't like feel like it. Like when you actually watch the season and you get to that point, you don't look at it and go, oh, we saw this in the trailer. You go, wow, this is badass. Which is an obvious plus side. So I think that overall... It was a really, really good show. I would put it on bar with Daredevil Season 1, for sure. Yeah, the story wasn't as good as Daredevil Season 1. Um, yeah, the villain wasn't as good as Daredevil Season 1, but I feel like it had sort of better fight scenes, uh, better background story, for sure. Um, like, Daredevil Season 1 didn't really... Like, apart from 
looking at him as a kid. Like, I, yeah, they go into sort of like his young adulthood in the second season, but I would have preferred to see some of that in the first. Um, but that was just me nitpicking. Uh, uh, where does it come on the spectrum of Netflix shows? It's certainly no Iron Fist. Let's not go into that. I think if I was to put them in an order, it would. I'd have to put Daredevil first, just because it came out first, and Kingpin is amazing, and I'm glad that Vincent D'Onofrio is coming back for season three. Um, then it would definitely be Punisher. Punisher would be a strong, strong second for sure. I'm just. I don't. I can't think of any like. We need to see more Jigsaw. I think for for us to sort of push Punisher back past Daredevil, a lot of people aren't liking Punisher because it's you know it's not for everyone. The whole military background, like sometimes it doesn't feel like a comic book show, which I think people have an issue with, and I don't think they've gone off of one specific storyline from the comics. Um, and they might have changed his origins. I think he was meant to be a cop in the origins, and they've made him like an ex-marine. I don't think that's an issue. It all works really, really well. I don't, I don't think it's an issue at all. Um, so I would say, yeah, it, it's a strong second, followed by Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and then Iron Fist. We don't put Daredevil season two in there because it, that would make things too difficult. Um, but yeah, John Burnfall stays true to the character. All the supporting characters are pretty good. Um, you know, I can't really think of any of them that I was like, God, go away. Like, even Lewis, the, like, improvised bomber. Like, I thought the, the fact that they built up to that was brilliant. They showed, like, all of his origins and stuff and the reason why he's doing it. And they addressed, like, a lot of issues that America are dealing with today. Like, you know, Britain doesn't really have an issue with, um, like, gun control and stuff. Because we don't have, like, fr free guns. <laughs> Whereas America sort of does, like... Here, it's your fifth birthday, have a machine gun. And they sort of address the fact that, you know, there's a lot of guns and stuff. And, you know, people that are coming out of the army don't always get the support that they need and stuff like that. There was a lot of important political issues in in the season. Um, so, yeah, that, which I think is important, combined with the supporting characters and John Burnfall as Punisher, and a pretty decent storyline, I think puts Punisher at a very, very solid 9 out of 10. I'm going to be generous. I was going to say 8, but we're going to give it a 9. Daredevil Season 1 was a 10. I uh, didn't review it on the channel. Probably should have. Probably will. At some point when I get desperate for content. I am now. Um, but yeah, I really, really hope that it gets renewed for a Season 2. There's nothing announced about a Season 2 yet, but there usually isn't with these Marvel Netflix shows. They usually wait, like, a couple of months before they announce... Um, and plus we've got Daredevil Season 3, which is going to start shooting soon. So hopefully that's uh, the next show to come out. There's also Iron Fist Season 2, which I think is going to be, like, is it the Mercenaries for Hire thing? I don't know. I don't, I'm not in. I'm probably not going to watch it. But anywho. Uh, so yeah, thank you for listening. Go ahead and comment, you know, if you watched the season, if you, if you liked it, if you disliked it, the reasons why and all that sort of stuff. Um, keep it friendly, keep it polite, there's no need to be horrible, <laughs> please not on my channel, and I will see you guys next time, bye bye.